All right. This is it. This is your show. Thank you. Thank you, Loic. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, here we are live again. If you haven't seen enough of me today, um, sorry. You're just going to see more of me for the next hour. Um, so, again, my name is Frank. Thank you, guys. Welcome back. We're here live, and I have a wonderful co-host now for the next section this is the mixed critique section and i have miss maria elisa ayerbe she is an audio engineer uh, and a grammy and latin grammy nominated mixer she lives in miami and she has more than 13 years of experience in recording mixing music production and audio post-production and my favorite person to crack jokes with on instagram maria elisa ayerbe can you guys give her some claps some one some virtual dap Please, guys, thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to, guys, I want to let you know that at the end, first of all, hi, Maria. Hi, Frank. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Please doing go my, ahead. Like, I'm doing like my host thing here. Um, right. So, so we have, guys, at the end of Maria and I's lovely chat here, our music critique, we're going to be giving away a couple of things. Um, so, first thing we're going to be giving away is. A copy of IK Multimedia's Total Studio 3 and uh, IK Multimedia's a mix box. Okay, there's going to be two questions at the end of this. We're going to be giving away both those um, pro uh, products. IK Multimedia is the wonderful sponsor of this segment. So thank you, IK Multimedia. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and also shout out to all the other sponsors who've been with us today. Uh, Sonarworks, uh, Odyssey. Are you wearing Odyssey headphones right now? No, these are all O's. Okay. But Audis, you can send me some headphones. <laughs> <laughs> You heard that, Odyssey. If you guys are interested in having Maria talk about your headphones, you guys send her a pair. Um, uh, yeah. So we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing that. And thank you to Audio Movers, who's providing us with the cool software that we're uh, streaming our audio with today. So if you guys had questions about how we're doing this, Audio Movers is definitely a big part of that. Um, yes. So. With that being said, uh, let's get started. So uh, some of you submitted some tracks and uh, Maria and I listened and we made notes. <laughs> Look at us engineers <laughs> with notes. <laughs> <Nerds>. On recycled paper. <laughs> so um yeah so we're going to be going through the tracks there's a there's a big uh chunk of them there's approximately six well not approximately there's actually 16 of them uh and we're going to try to get to each one however if you know we run out of time uh we're going to continue the conversation in the slack and leave our um impressions or our critique for those tracks in the slack channel okay so if you don't hear um your song or us talk to you about your song then it'll you know we'll leave the comments in the slack channel and you guys can ask us about our critiques and and what we think um so are you ready maria i am ready i have connected to the uh listen to and i encourage everyone remember you got to open up the listen to on chrome and hit connect so you can stream our audio they actually don't have to do that they can just enjoy it watching the live stream I'm taking care of it for them. Oh, that's fancy. <laughs> so, so you might hear it <laughs> twice. So just watch out. Huh? Yeah, I already closed. So, it. Fancy right, for you. them, not fancy for us. All right. Um, okay, so here we go from the beginning. So the first track I'm going to play is from Maria Natalia. Uh, and the song is called La Trampa. So I don't know if Maria, if you're here. Um, if you're here, put your not, hands not up. Not me, in the chat. Maria. The track oh, was no, this submitted is a, by this is a... Marco de Sangroa. Oh, that's 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 the name of the song. I'm sorry. Yeah, the artist is Marco de Sangron, and the track is uh, Maria Natalia La Drama. So I'm going to play this, uh, play you a little verse chorus. We're not going to play the entire song, obviously, because of time, but uh, we're going to play a little uh, verse chorus for you guys. <laughs> La trampa fue verte ayer, la trampa fue tenerte seca, el veneno de probar 
tu piel y volver a perder la cabeza Enredarnos de nuevo y hacer una mezcla homogénea Dejar que el cuarto se encendiera El error no fue hacerlo otra vez El error fue no hacerlo más veces Si no somos de nadie Ya ves, las reglas están para romperse Es inútil volverlo a negar Si nadamos en las evidencias Tu locura atrae mi demencia Notas como el tiempo se disuelve cuando no hay aire que pasa entre dos anatomías Somos tú y yo al ritmo de mi voz Sientes que la música acompaña mariposas en la panza cuando grito extasiada Somos tú y yo cantando la pasión pero al corazón All right. Super cool. Super, super, super cool. Um, Maria, what did you think? I like the vibe of the th of the song, of the track in general. I feel like it's almost there, but not quite there yet, but it's going in the right direction. Uh, one of the things that I noticed first is how is the vocal is a little bit level wise inconsistent throughout the sections, which I think it's like number one thing that everyone should be uh, hearing for that your vocal has the same. If you want to go vocal hot or if you want to go like have your vocal sort of um, hidden within the, the track, whatever you choose, stay with that and just make sure that is consistent all the way through. Um, I felt a little mono um very narrow then again um it may be a thing that i heard consistently through all the tracks that we were that we received and that is probably because people are mixing in headphones so just make sure that uh you're when you're assigning those reverbs even if you don't trust your speakers it's best to make sure that your reverbs play play well outside of your headphones uh before you uh finalize your track and um i feel like the kick could be a little bit more present the bass was also coming in and out like it had some super loud moments and then it would i lost i would lose it but overall i think it's just a matter of polishing here things here and there what do you think i i i agree so i liked a lot of the sound choices it gave me like kind of a little bit of a portis head kind of thing yeah. to it a little bit in the beginning a little trip hoppy which i, I really dug But one of the things that I wrote here, which goes along with what you said, is I wrote safe. It felt like everything, like mm -hmm. they were almost like scared to push the faders up. Like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that, you know, goes in line uh, with what you were saying. Like, you know, something could have been louder. And then I agree with the consistency. Um, I think uh, overall, I really love that. Like, it's super dynamic because it gets like really loud and then it comes back. But I feel mm -hmm. like if the vocal was consistent in like you knowing like this is the thing you're supposed to be paying attention to right. all the time, then, then everything else can do that. You can fill in the gaps. But then exactly. when when like the vocal is doing this and that and then all of a sudden an element just jumps in, you're like, whoa. Yeah, right. I agree. And you don't know who to totally pay agree. attention to anymore. Amazing. All right. That was cool. So uh, thank you, Mr. Sangron. Uh, that was amazing. Thank you for submitting it. Um, and let's move on to the next track, which is a uh, thief in the night. Uh, this is, mm -hmm. uh, the name was Zoli fears. Uh, this is, a uh, another one. So here I'll play it from the beginning, a little verse chorus action again. We gon' rock that shit till they tell me that I'm nice And we just tryna get lit, pull up the liquor with the ice So we gon' pop 
up in this bitch Drop the bass, now we all hyped You know it's hard sometimes When we choosing wrong from right We gon' rock that shit Till they tell me that I'm nice And we just tryna get lit Pull up that lit girl with the ice So we gon' pop in this bitch Drop the bass, now we all hyped You know it's hard sometimes When we choosing wrong from I right I wanna be dipped in gold Just so they say that I'm shining bright And no, I can't leave her alone Selfish, I'm that type With no regrets for sure Cause I'm living, I'm alright And you know her heart I stole Like I'm a thief up in the night Like a thief up they in the night They me, they know I'm bringing that energy Shipping hoes out like delivery Fucking with Kimberly Cut that bitch off cause I needed my liberty She gon' be mad but oh well cause I'm eagerly Waiting for her friend to slide on my dog Now she hurt cause I couldn't pass up opportunities Just for one night so don't open your mouth With her head in the pillow You know that she gotta scream She a fiend Something about that shit really make her cream She said bed not tell no one else I said Lou Dope, dope Very cool. cool, very cool track Um, On this one I so to me, um, just off rip, uh, just because I know some a lot of us deal with this. This sounds like the vocal was sung to a two track, like the track was already kind of mixed because I I felt like the snare should have been louder and some other elements. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which typically, in a mix, somebody would have brought up. It almost feels like the track was already mixed a certain way. And you just kind of put the vocals on top, which makes it really difficult to get a balance because then you can't mm -hmm. like move stuff out of the way. Um, and yeah, and you have to deal with that. Everything is up the middle. Um, and I think there's uh, something important for producers when you guys are making tracks, you got to leave space for the vocals. Like you got to get stuff out of the way and, and, and leave a space. So, um, I think, I think it's a cool song. I think the idea is great. I think just sonically, like it, the, when the beat comes in, it didn't feel like, you know, like there's feel that like, impact. Yeah. That's, that's my mm -hmm. thing with that. Yeah, I, I I believe I actually like the tone and the compression and the overall consistency of the vocal. I think that's actually pretty well done. And um and uh I on the on the actual track I noticed and I, I don't know, I'm just a, um, I like my 808s to have that resonant tail, like the release is long and it sort of decays. This one was like muffled, it felt really short to me. It can be a stylistic thing, but I enjoyed those like long like it mm -hmm. sort of like rumbles down i like that thing on the 808 um same comments one thing that i would add definitely um i heard i believe what in this type of tracks where the instrumental is so steady and really consistent and there's not a lot of change then what else can you add to make it interesting and i believe that's delay work and reverb work and throws on the vocal and i think that's what takes your track to just again having a safe good sounding mix to like an actual production and that's that's that extra element that i believe could have thrown be thrown in the vocal since everything else is already working really well like eq and compression and tone and color from that vocal i agree like you know if you look at somebody who mixes a lot um for their for a living like at the end their mix is not it's not straight lines across it's like no it grows it changes it has moments and cr contrasts yeah so the same way you guys double the vocals in the chorus and then you do a single lead for the verse stuff like that like the mix should be mimicking those things it should be moving in that direction so i i agree with with what you said maria um but overall you guys this a lot of stuff is really good it's just like you just need little just tweaks here and there um to get you yeah. over that that hump all right so the next one i'm going to play is um uh heaven uh by rose aravita aravita so here we go, Rose, we spoke earlier, so here we go.
I had to play a little bit more of that one just because of the, the structure of the song um, to actually get to the vocal part. So thank you, uh, Rosa. So do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Yes, no, I'll go first. So I really enjoy the track. I think it's it's one of those other cases where like um, it feels like there needs to be a better connection established between the actual production of the track and the vocal. Uh, I feel that the, the, the EQ and the mix made in the vocal does not really blend well with the rest of the track like it feels like they're two uh separate environments that meet and um eq wise the vocal comes in too loud uh for 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 what it is maybe or maybe that is the intention but what else can you do to make it feel like it's not uh disconnected but it's actually what you intended to do as an artistic proposal um I don't know if there, I, I couldn't feel a kick, uh, a consistent kick. I don't know if the kick, uh, maybe it's just a, a matter of side chaining that bass because it's like, it's that one, two, like that consistent quarter note bass. Um, so if you're ha if you're having that type of a bass with a kick, then you need to side chain. You need to pump it. You need to use a dynamic EQ like uh, Jose Camilo was men mentioning for, for another track. Use something that can carve a little bit of space um, from the bass, which is taking over into the kick. Um, I really like those moments created when that, when that like, um, electric piano, like it comes in and out and just creates that vibe and that crunchiness like spaced out. I, I like that. I enjoy that. I, I just feel like, again, it's a matter of matching vocals and track together and providing that marriage where it feels like one single thing. I, I agree. Um, I mean, in my notes, I have the kick could come up um, or it doesn't even necessarily have to be up. It's just more presence in that, like kind of making sure that I'm also, understanding when it's happening. Um, yeah. I'm, and and, I'm, and Rose, Rose is actually connected to the chat and she's saying yes, it's sidechain and dynamic cued. It's it's probably a matter of just finding that, that um, as you were saying, that 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 uh i don't know maybe it's 1k 1.5k somewhere where you have that top that sticks through right yeah that little just like pokey frequency that just lets you hear that little tick which your brain will automatically go oh that's the kick and then it just makes the experience overall um better um i think that uh on the vocal i could have used like uh it almost feels like um and it's kind of like muffly, like it feels like low midi. And I understand if you're trying mm -hmm. to get like this, like a moody presence from it, but it, I also mm -hmm. need to hear some of the detail. And I, I was missing some of that. Um, and then just be careful with the bass, uh, because in a track like this, obviously it's a, it's a bass heavy and it, it can get boomy and it can, that might be actually what might be covering up your kick. You know, you could have okay. like this really boomy 250 hertz kind of area that's just doing all this stuff and then the kick can't do its little and that's where like side chaining and dynamic eq cutting out that little space just for that to sit in um and i think that that would improve uh just the overall feeling you know it mm -hmm. needs to feel like maria said it needs to feel together like they're all working together they're all trying to achieve the same goal it's just we all need to make space for each other so um rose just said thank you in the chat you're welcome rose that's why you're here and that's why you, you were brave enough to submit your song i want to say that this takes a lot of bravery guys i would yeah. not submit my own personal music to be critiqued. 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, They'd be like, that guy? Is that what he does? Oh man. Yeah, okay. it's like, ooh, we're not gonna call him ever. <laughs> yeah, Everybody it takes it takes a lot of guts. Maria would be making Chrissy Teigen face like <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome all right so let's move on to the next track this track is called elevated and it's featuring octavia petrut i hope i pronounced that wrong and it's uh uh zach rubin rattel i think i hope i produced it right modern um, future Super awesome. Super awesome. Um, really great job on that track. Um, my notes here were like this sounds super polished. Like you guys, you guys did a lot of work um on this. There's like I hear a lot of like intricate stuff happening there. Um overall, really like the 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 vocal sound. I'm I'm a big fan of like bright vocals. Um and I really like the track. The track's really cool. I like how the chorus I guess to me that was the chorus it doesn't have lyrics in it. It's just kind of like a musical chorus. I think that's really cool. That section. My only my only uh critique there is be careful with the compression on the stereo bus. Um that section where like and I, I let it go there where the snare was like that 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 like building up because it starts to get more compressed, you don't feel that like more exciting. It's like it's all there. Um and you're entering what Maria likes to call stick of butter territory um where it's just like your tracks just like one solid brick all the way and although it makes you feel like yeah the track's really loud but if everything is loud nothing will stick out at any point in time so i think that's my only my only overall i think it sounds great i think it was great yeah so basically after frank steals my my terms <laughs> um then uh the other thing i have to say yes absolutely uh especially with this type of pop where you're creating that that pre where you're basically creating that ambience and you're dropping everything out so then you're going to take out you're dropping the track because you're going to take out the vocal after you want that chorus to bang and it's not there and it's not there and that's not only over compression that's over limiting and and i understand how important it is to limit nowadays because it helps us to create the super wide track and all, it sort of lifts up all the atmosphere, but at the same time, re you're removing the excitement of the track. So this is where uh, an emotional mix will always be uh, better than a technically correct and accurate mix. Uh, it's just our job to find the sweet spot where both of those worlds live. Um, 
I do. I agree there. I heard distortion even in some, uh, I heard a, a little bit of distortion and that is hard clipping coming from uh, an overly limited track. So you guys got to be careful, especially on those rise. And my only complaint, uh, because that, I mean, I know it would take a lot to undo the limiter, uh, but other than that, um, my only complaint would be when the pre comes, the vocal drops a lot and I suddenly feel like I've been let go. It just, it's just too low for me. I believe that there are other ways to get that same result of just having a distant vocals, which would be wash it out, delay, uh, maybe roll the, a little bit of the top. So when the, the chorus comes, uh, it feels like all over the frequency spectrum. But when you drop it in volume, it's like, it's like when you're, you're like lifting the, like the the tablecloth of a table you're like whoa it's just you suddenly left you you took out out the ground of the vocal um but this is like we're talking like to make it an exceptional track because i love the track and i love the songwriting this is this is dope so congratulations to modern future for that yeah good job guys overall like super good job and then um i think i think there you know some people need to start having a conversation about you know um parallel like you can get a lot of volume from doing stuff in parallel and not necessarily crushing it like you're squishing some of it and you're leaving the original transients and you blend them together and you get this super loud record that still has so a uh, lot of dynamic a lot of dynamics because you can have you can keep your vocal up by by parent by having a parallel channel to your vocal your vocal will always stay up by having a parallel for your drums you're making sure that that's going to stay up you can distort and have parallel distortion as well for your 808s for your uh lower sins for your kick i mean there's so many ways to do it you don't have to go full brower style but definitely there's a way in between where having parallels is the way to make something loud without having to over limit yeah make parallel great again 2021 so. oh my god <laughs> all right uh the next track uh it's called uh falling around uh and this is from tim garcia falling all around excuse me yeah the sky is falling I let that one go all the way because it was so short. It's... Yeah. <laughs> There's so I mean, the, that one up. the sky is falling all around. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you what did you think about this one, Maria? Well, uh I I enjoyed the tune. However, I think uh if this is like a classical Beatles uh production approach. And if you want to do that, you gotta have certain elements that fall into into that. I I, I loved how like panning in terms of like the vocals and the background vocals and 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 the guitars is is very on that line like you you feel like those elements are showing up and popping up on, on towards the side keeping the 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 lead vocal at the center and just very hot all the time however um drums were a little bit unexistent um i don't know where they are and also i don't know where the bass was um i one thing that I noticed for sure is that the bass is, and this is not a mix thing, but it affects mix. The bass is um, 
out of sync with the kick and because it's a very it's a very paul mccartney style bass where it's like boom 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 right it's doing this walk it's really important that it feels locked with the bass otherwise your whole uh ground your your whole um uh yeah like the ground the structure of your mix uh starts to crumble apart so before even mixing this track i would have taken a little bit of time and make sure that um bass is properly quantized to the kick so it doesn't feel like it's boom 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 because that that sort of um it's a jumpy track it's a beatles track so that that element i mean ringo and, and paul need to be grooving together for sure and uh uh the guitars i like the way they're panned but i think the color could be improved i, th I, th I thought they were a little dull i think a little bit of more of a of a sparkle it is what it is maybe it's a recording thing or maybe they were just recorded straight to to uh, line. That's why uh, that's this is the perfect timing where your friends from IK Multimedia can help you with amplitude. Boom, and just brightening up your Night mix. <laughs> yeah, well, they know I use this for that, so I'm not. I, this is no like we're, we're past this, and and yeah, and maybe just bringing down the vocal a little bit to just make it feel part of the band when the drums come up. I, I agree. Um, my my biggest thing when I first came on, I wanted the drums to be, you know, and it's not a hip hop track. It doesn't have to be like, but I didn't feel that like the syncopation. I didn't feel snappy. the groove. Yeah. I didn't yeah. feel that. And and I agree with the basic kind of like, I felt like overall the track was kind of like all living like in this little smaller area and it, it wasn't the the instruments weren't punching through um, mm -hmm. almost like if it was like recorded to, you know, some old like a four track you know where you didn't have a lot of crazy stuff like it almost feels like there's like a huge tape plug-in over the entire thing and it's just kind of smushing everything together um yeah and that's my main thing is just like a little bit of more detail would would have been really useful especially in the low and the lower frequencies um i do like the vocals i think they're i mean overall the song's really cool i, I you know you're you went beatles i always go beach boys that's fine but i like the beach boys more but um <laughs> it's the same thing right <laughs> but that's where my brain went automatically that's why i wore this shirt today actually a little jimmy buffett vibes too so you know okay i'm going to the of leon so oh. there you go <laughs> so yeah no um but overall i think it's a cool song i think it would really benefit from a, a little bit more separation in the instruments just to give it that detail and and just to make sure that that groove is locked in like maria says and other than that like super fun song and i like that it's short but that's yeah compression 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 on the drums compression awesome awesome all right uh thank you tim let's move on the next song is called like totally wild thing from eric campbell eric if you're here this is yours yes he yes he uh-huh yeah yeah Gonna bring that, do some back, energize my flow like the new pack. Rebel class, breaking rules to go. Busting Lucy like this, feeling juicy like this. I'm tasty, so demand and watch me head it like this. Yeah, I'm ruthless. Got that special something I ain't losing. Tearing up my town, feeling reckless. Faking something now, I'm a go ahead, go, go ahead. very cool i like the vibes the vibes are cool um yeah. i like the track i think that a lot of the elements are in a good place um 
my career my only critique for the track is really to the low end is pushing a bit much um and it kind of overpowers things um in certain sections like it just gets really overbearing so you, i think you need to be careful with it um and in the vocals there's in the beginning you hear it, there's like this low like plosive stuff um mm. almost like if it had been recorded either like on a dynamic mic or maybe they were just too close to the microphone and there's just like this kind of or low no, frequency no pop stuff. or no pop filter correct something is there is is distracting in the beginning uh from that and uh, i feel it's affecting some of the clarity um and then um other than that i i mean i don't have a lot i, I think the bass really when that part comes in it, it really kind of takes away from me being able to listen and that just kind of threw me off a little bit so I, I mean other than that i think the track is super fun um and i would also bring up some of the backgrounds i think they would maybe yeah if they played a, a bigger part in some of the sections it would it would be more exciting so that's yeah the, Totally. And that's in that same line. What I thought is that with this kind of electro pop vibes, I like I like production is made out of, of like little snappy moments. So as a mixer, you got to make sure that you provide you delivered those snappy moments. So like if when they're when you don't have a vocal, that's your ear candy moment. What else? It's lying around in there that you can live, have automated and make it poke um, outside of the mix. Uh, and, and that's a, the and if there's nothing in there, uh, delay, I felt like overall the vocal, it was a little bit too disconnected with the track. Um, and that is a thing that happens a lot when you're mixing in headphones. Again, uh, you feel like the delay you're doing, because I, I noticed there was an amount of delay, but I don't think the delay or the room vibe is blending well enough with your track. And that can happen because one, you're working on headphones and two, you work on your track without listening to the vocal. So you make a lot of decisions without having the vocal there and and, and should be the other way around. Uh, your track can be dope, but if you have a vocal, then override that. The, it, the track needs to serve the vocal and not the other way around. I agree with you. Um, bass is a little bit too loud and it's eating out on the kick. Uh, so I'm missing out a lot of the punch from the kick. And overall, I, I just think it was a tad harsh on the 2K, 2.5K. And you can hear it because there is that uh, like stingy harshness on the on the vocal and also the hi-hat. Um, so that that is a thing that I would go over. And it's more of a master general like stereo thing than, than um, individual elements. And last but not least, when the... For the, some reason, I really like the song, so I, I, I heard it a couple of times all the way through. And something that I noticed, we probably would not be able to notice it here, but when the song ends, and guys, this is an overall feedback, um, you can hear the residual white noise from the plugins that you're using. And that is like a no, no. The track ends, and it's like... <laughs> no. Cut them off find uh first of all you got to train your ears or if you can't hear those residual wide noises coming uh coming up once the track is done or or even while you have your playback stopped then make sure that you improve your monitoring situations because they're there and they're just making this they're creating this mud underneath your track that uh will always hurt you so be careful with those uh analog knobs yeah <laughs> Yes, <laughs> be very careful. That is probably um, one of the things I notice the most in most mixes nowadays. At the end, or at the yeah. very beginning, or if some, or if the music drops out and it's just vocal, you hear it's and it's terrible because the more you compress, <clears throat> rule number one of compression: the more you compress, the 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 closer your floor gets to the loudest po portion of your mix, because you're reducing that dynamic range. So. Uh, it, it's impossible to work like that. And and to be honest, every time, Frank, I don't know about you, but every time I get a track, a printed track from production that has that as a mixing engineer, I return, I'm like, remove the noise. And like, I'm not <laughs> beginning this mix until you remove that. Uh, I think most people honestly don't know that it's there and they get so used to hearing yeah. it that they don't even acknowledge it anymore. Because exactly. I'll tell people all the time about, I'm like, hey, do you know that button? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, turn it off. And then they're like, oh, and they're like, oh, but what does it do? And I'm like, I don't know what it does. I just know it makes noise. So stop. Yeah. <laughs> so Ow. cool. Awesome. 
Awesome. All right, let's Go move on. We're moving along. We got about 20 minutes left. Remember, we're gonna um give something away. So um we've only gotten through what six songs, so we probably mm -hmm. won't get through all 16, but the um like I said before, we'll we'll leave the rest of the information in the in the Slack chat for you guys. Yes, um, we have our notes. Yes, absolutely. Notes. Wait, where's my camera? Oh, there it is. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so all right. So next one is from James Carter. Uh, this song is called Not a Lyricist. Amazing. Um, thank you. Vibe. Thank you, James. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, so I think that you're not a lyricist, but I'm pretty sure that you're a guitar player. Um, it's it's you know, uh it's sometimes it's really uh, easy to spot who makes the song in the band by which instrument is the loudest. Um, so clearly the level of the guitars here is just you know louder than everything else, and and it's evident that that's the part that you want people to listen to. Um, but I think if you're going to put lyrics on something, even if it's, I'm not a lyricist, then people are going to pay attention to those and they're going to want to hear what you're saying. So the vocal becomes just as important as the guitar part. I don't mind levels coming in and out, but if you're going to sing something, then I need to know that that part is important and, and it's part of the song. So, um, it feels like the vocals were an afterthought in the mix. Like they don't feel like it like you didn't care as much about the vocal as you did about the other instruments being like cool and like having effects even though i'm sure you played maybe with a pedal and those effects were there the vocals should have also had the same amount of care and i think that would have just elevated the song to like new heights um i, I mean there's not a lot going on i love the percussion stuff that comes in it's super cool very vibey um i just wish you would have just cared about being a vocalist in the mix and then <laughs> Because then again, you make you do make a statement when you're saying you're not a lyricist, and then then if you say I'm I'm not a lyricist and that's how you intro the song, then I want to pay attention to what you have to say. Uh, it's it's it, it's like inverse psychology. 
to be honest. So yeah, uh, I agree with you 100%. Um, on the production side of thing, um, as as Frank was saying, it's, it's a little bit obvious that you were the guitarist. However, uh, guitars are a, little, are a little bit out of tune. A lot of those guitars are out of tune. So then it's it's a sort of a double standard. If you're like if you're gonna put it uh, louder and then it's out of tune, then you gotta make sure that you double check your tuning every time. Because then again, you're doing lots of solos, so make sure your guitar has been properly calibrated. Um, make sure that you have a, a new sets of strings and you've let them rest enough so that when you're bending, uh, your 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 guitar doesn't go out of tune. Um, and then also, cause I heard it not only on the lead track, but also on the, on the, on the rhythm guitar. So those are things that, again, they're not mixed things, but it will point out the attention of anyone uh, once the song is playing and it diverts the attention from everything else on the song, especially when the guitar is so loud. Uh, the congas, I would have liked them to be more present. Uh, that is just a Latino in me. Uh, yeah. I, was, I didn't want to say it. I was going to be like, because we're Hispanic? like <laughs> Exactly. Conga, right? But yes, I want them to be louder. I want them to be more up front. I know it's more of an islandy, vibey uh, uh, beach. But still, you can understand it can be more of a of a 70s track but then again that it, they could come louder and they could come um just mm, when you bring down the guitars uh immediately the congas have more space because they share a lot of the same frequency range especially on the slappy part of the congas yeah um i just want to say something just of what maria said about frequency range like this is for the the producers and the people recording like as the song is being created, you have to keep in your mind like everything can't live in the same frequency range. You have to arrangement. Start, yeah, your arrangement has to has to you know work. Sometimes it's maybe you don't use a regular guitar, maybe you use a baritone guitar, or you know, just different things, or maybe the instrumentation has to change because it can't all be in the middle. Obviously, we like to hear things in the middle because that's what we hear the loudest, frequency wise. Um, but you have to your arrangement has to you know support the vocal as maria said earlier so um, yeah. just keep that in mind when you guys are making music and james, james has a really good question in here uh i use the akg 414 for congas would you suggest a different mic so yes actually because uh what happens with an akg 414 is that it is it is a condenser microphone so if you're trying to get a cool tone out of a conga you need to get really close because you need to get that slap from the from the hand when it reaches the 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 the, the, um, skin, the skin of the conga but when you put a, a condenser mic close to it what it's going to happen is that you're going to make it distort because it's going to be too much too much sound pressure level coming into the the mic so i suggest instead of doing condenser you go one uh it could be an sm57 it could be a 58 if you don't have one it could be an re20 it could be a md4421 uh, sennheiser uh, just make sure that you have one per conga and you can get as close as you want. And then you're going to get that snap. And that's, and that's how you get really cool congas. I agree 100%. I'm a 421 on congas guy. Um, Me too. And it, it just, it, it works really well. And you get a lot of more tone, like that low end kind of beefiness from the proximity of the mic being so close. So it just mm -hmm. makes them more impactful. So I complete. So take it from the two Hispanic people right here in the thing. Yes. Uh, yes. From the Miami the sound machine. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to the next track. Um, the next one is from David D'Angelo. And this one is called uh, Keep My Distance. I, we can't, I can't hear it. Oh, I know why. That's my fault. My bad. You were like jamming to the I'm track. I'm like jamming by myself. I'm like, why is nobody up here with me? Okay, hold on. Sorry about that.
super cool super cool david um man i i really like this one a lot obviously it's you know it's just, just a track um but i like what you did here um frequency wise because it leaves a lot of space for a vocal to come in and sit nicely into this so if you were to send this somebody somebody could easily jump in here and and add um their their vocals um i really i honestly i really like this one i i don't <laughs> i'm sorry like i just really like this one and i was in here like in the studio it's like cool. oh this is my jam like I, so um it's really vibey I, yeah i agree yeah. <laughs> I have a couple. I have a couple of comments. Maybe I can say you're biased. I, I have maybe. a couple of uh, maybe. Yeah, you're just too vibey, <laughs> too vibey. Uh, no, it is a dope track, David. So congrats for that. And for my particular taste, I, I would love more subs on the kick. I think the conk has the kick has a lot of punch, um, uh, but it's lacking subs. And I really like because the bass is kind of like like grooving it's it's a little bit like it reminds me of like a thundercat type of uh bass where it's like oh, bah, bah, that, that 70s type of old vintagey compressed bass which is dope but it's super mid-rangey so then i would add more low end to the kick so it sounds more uh more chicago style kind of thing more more solely more groovy like it, it lacks that deep flavor down there um and there i just noticed one thing again just to have a more cohesive mix there was a between the contrast contrast between the sections obviously because we don't have a vocal right now it felt like something was taken away obviously it's probably because there is no vocal then the vocal can compensate for that sudden change because the eq and everything changes a lot uh so yeah it's it's the perfect drop for that kind of situation. But the first time I heard it, I'm like, oh, what happened? Then I remember, oh, this is this is meant for that. It's not properly an instrumental track. It's more of a track. It's dope. Great job. Fantastic job. And on that one, Maria, I think we're gonna have to cut it, um, just to make sure that you know we have about six minutes left here, um, just to make sure that we have time for all the cool, very very fun stuff. So. Um, because there's a lot of you guys in here and so many of you were brave enough to submit uh, your tracks, we're going to do something really special. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to going to give away the uh, mix box. Everybody has a chance to win the mix box, right? But the total studio two from IK multimedia will only be available to people who actually submitted a track and were brave enough. What? That's so, uh, dope. So Dope. that's what you get for being brave. So you get an opportunity to actually win that amazing IK Multimedia um, plug-in pack, which uh, according to Loic, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe, Marie, you can clarify this. He said it's worth about 900 bucks. Yes. I mean, it has so many, so many cool things, so many cool things. And you can do a lot because with one EQ, you can have most of their plugins. A lot of their plugins have uh, mid and side as well as left and right. And you can also choose to do uh, or have just left and just right and have it linear or face cohesive. So it's like you buy one single EQ and you have so many options that you would not when, when you buy other other plugin brands. So. All right. Well, you heard Congrats. it here from Maria. So let's do... We have, I have two questions. Do you have a question? I mean, I have two, but if you, if you have one that you want to ask and we can do one. No, and go one, for or... it. Go, okay, go cool. for it. Go for it. Okay. So, uh, f this is for, and, and did you, men sorry, I'm jumping in. Did you remind everybody what they need to do to answer? And I'm, how was I was it, like, about to tell them. Okay. Okay. Why do you, why do you come in like God into the chat with the no face, just audio? Like who? Yeah, that's weird. Um... Like... <laughs> All right, so guys, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to ask you the track. You guys are going to respond in the chat, okay? So the first person to respond with the correct answer will be the winner, right? So you're in the in the YouTube's chat, okay? So uh, earlier on, we were discussing uh, mics to mic the congas, and we mentioned a mic that we both liked. What was that mic? Waiting. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. A... Oh yeah, Ollie yeah. Pitcher 421. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Good Ollie. Job. Ollie, great job. Fantastic. All right. Now the second one. This one is for 
the, the 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 all the marbles. This one's for the big pack. Okay, are you guys ready? So while we were speaking, Maria and I also spoke about a technique used to gain volume without destroying your dynamics. What was it? Let's see here. Let's see what's going on. People are thinking. People are rewinding the video right now, trying to find that spot in the video. That's Bam! Awesome. Michael Pierce parallel compression. Go for it. It's it's Great job, that's, uh, compression, but we'll it's like French. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Yes, Michael. Awesome. Now Great job. aside Great. from winning that amazing plugging pack, you you won knowledge. <laughs> Absolutely. Go now and you know use what to do it. with that fantastic plug-in pack. <laughs> grab, awesome. grab the saturator from IK Multimedia and drop it as a parallel and all the tape compression plugins from IK Multimedia. And there you go. Amazing. Problem well, solved. Maria, any last words before we sign off for these lovely people? Uh, keep mixing. Keep practicing. Keep showing. It's really brave that you show your tracks. Uh, call your friends, ask them all the time. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, it will only make you better. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is wonderful. So for those of you who, who are winners, please either go into the Slack channel and speak to Hannah, or you can email Hannah, Hannah at musicexpo.co to redeem your prize. Uh, coming up, we have another chat, uh, the short and sweet of the music business with Rick Caballo, Melissa Caballo, Mark Pearson, Stefan Aronson. Uh, all those people will be there uh, talking about the short and sweet of the music business. So uh, please stick around uh, and we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>